Hi, thanks for joining me again. Um, I was going to watch more Dumb Americans, but uh, frankly, that's kind of painful. And uh, I just, I just, I just can't bring myself to do that to myself at the holidays. But what I can do is we can see how America has really messed us up. And I know it's, I know it's messed up. I turn on my TV and I see that it's messed up and uh, I walk out into the world and I see that it's messed up so um, we're gonna look at some I've had friends that have lived overseas and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at uh, Americans living abroad how did America fuck you up so let's uh hop on into it and see just how bad it is so i've been living in new zealand for the last four years and at work there was an american flag and i jokingly went and put my hand over my heart and said the pledge of allegiance and everyone was kind of like what is that? <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's a, it's a Pledge of Allegiance. So basically growing up every day at school at like 9 o'clock or whatever, we would all stand up and the whole class would recite the Pledge of Allegiance with our hands over our hearts to the American flag in the corner of the room. And my coworkers were like, what? <laughs> and, you know, when you say it out loud, it sounds a bit culty. Y'all ever wonder, okay, like... I always found that very, I just, I didn't like doing it because you're, you're, it's a level of indoctrination. And even as like a kid, I was like, well, this is stupid, you know, um, I pledge allegiance to the flag. Well, I'd rather pledge allegiance, you know, to the people but they've kind of proven that they ain't going to do nothing to help protect me. So, um, shit, I forgot where I was going with that. Realized that America really so when I was in high school, I was a lifeguard, and during my lifeguard training, they taught us that before we even administer first aid or CPR, we had to ask for consent to avoid being sued. Now fast forward a couple of years and I'm in London as a waitress and my company sends me to go do CPR training. And while I'm there, they go over the same stuff that I learned in the States, but I notice that they're completely glossing over this one particular area. So I raise my hand and I ask, uh, what are the laws here? Like, how do you avoid being sued if something goes wrong? To which every single person in the room starts laughing at me and says, oh, you're American, right? Yeah, no one here is going to sue you for trying to save their life. And that's how it should be. You know, yeah, you might walk away with like a cracked rib, but at least you got to walk away. And in America, that's just not freaking good enough. Why? Because they can get some court. I'm going to leave several adjectives out of that sentence. They can get some court to grant them yeah, you know, you didn't consent for them to save your life. So, yeah, otherwise, I just, you know, that's one thing that bothers me is, you know, you literally have to consider, do I want to save this person's life or do I want to get sued? It's just, it's stupid. So, uh, in the U.S., I, I regularly get pneumonia. Sometimes I get, like, pneumonia and bronchitis, but pretty much all, you know, like clockwork, I get it. Um, I had just moved to Scotland for my master's, you got to go to the doctor. and I was coming down with a respiratory infection like I do every year. It was just the early onset of pneumonia, but like normally I wait to the point of where I'm like literally unable to breathe before I go to the doctor because it's expensive in the U.S. Yeah. Well, here I was like, you know what? I'm here. I paid for the NHS. Let me let me go get it. Saw a doctor, gave me a prescription. I went to the pharmacy to pick up my medication, something that I literally would not be able to afford with my minimum wage job and being a full-time student they gave it to me for free because it was necessary and i almost cried in the pharmacy i would <laughs> like have tears are welling in my eyes 
Just one time that means. Yeah, I had, um, I guess it started out as bronchitis one time, and I was just, I was literally walking death. When they finally got me to the hospital, I had developed pneumonia, and uh, yeah, yeah, I would have, I couldn't afford to go. Um, I got, I had a mild, mild, like little, like virus thing kicking, and my job, here's what you do in America. If you call in sick, most of the time you have to have a doctor's note. Um, but if you show up for work and they see that you're sick and they send you home, then you don't have to go get the doctor's note. So that's what I would do is, just like everybody else, you show up, you tell them, hey, I'm sick. They let you try and work for a while, realize, nah, this ain't going to happen. And then they let you go home. And by the way, this is generally in food service. So think about that one for a minute. And uh, I was sick. I went into work. They were going to send me home, but they weren't going to send me home. They told me I had to go to the emergency room. I had to go. It was over $1,500 just for the emergency room visit. I didn't get a prescription. They told me I just had to let it run its course. So, if you have health care in your country, you do not have any clue how lucky you are. Okay, so I live in New York now, but I used to live in England. And one time I was out at this bar with my friends and these two cops walked by. And one of my friends was like, oh, I wonder why there are cops out right now. And I looked at the cops and I got really confused. And I was like, those are cops? And my friends were like, yeah. And I was like, they're not, they don't have guns. And everyone was like, why, why would they have guns? They were like so aghast at that question. And I was realized in that moment that, and learned that guns there are so few guns in the UK and it's such not an issue that like the everyday cop does not carry a gun. And I was just, there are houses in America that have seen more guns in them than a fresh vegetable. It blew my fucking mind. I think about it all the time. I hate guns so much. I hate guns so much. In the US, I could not let my 11 year old son go outside and play by himself. Someone would call the cops or something would legitimately happen to him. And so there was no way. And when I moved to Germany, my husband, who's a German national, suggested that he go outside and play by himself because we would not have to worry. Um, I don't live in a place that's really like that. Um, like, I, I, you know, I, I grew up a long time ago and so we did go and play outside but usually like with my kid it was more of a play in the backyard or I'll open up the window to keep an eye on him um when I first moved in over here there was some older folks that lived around and there's still a few of them and they they're those kind of folks that if your kid's out they'll keep an eye on them and if your kid's acting up they will definitely corral them. They'll come down and knock on your door and be like, hey, you need to get out of here and check on your kid. But the the, the place that I live is not, you know, too bad about that. And so, I mean, if you're from like, there, there's some places where, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't let my kid out. Really? But. So I didn't realize this until I moved abroad, but Americans have a very strange concept of freedom. Oh, yeah. Like, when you're growing up, you're always told that America is such an amazing place and, you know, it's the land of the free, home of the brave. But, um, like, I keep hearing these criticisms from people like, oh, yeah, but America has the most freedom. Whoa, yeah, freedom. No. I mean, there may be we a don't. few exceptions or nuances, but in the UK, you're still free. Like, that is the biggest lie that Americans are ever told, that there aren't other free places. Like, I just don't, I don't understand. And if I'm being perfectly honest, I feel like the concept is kind of destroying American democracy. How ironic. Like, they need to kind of understand that they need to work on things to make themselves better and more free for their citizens. Yeah, because, I mean, for some place that's so free... We sure as hell make a law for every damn thing out there. 
up to and including your own personal health choices. Okay, so I'm not currently living abroad, but I did live in Australia for a few months. And one night while I was there, I got a little bit too crazy and I ended up on public transportation without a phone. Um, and I had to find my way back to my apartment and I got lost. Um, and while I got off the tram to get onto a different tram to take me home, um, a like middle-aged gentleman came up to me and I immediately went into attack mode and I was like going to kill him. And he was like, no, no, no. I was just going to tell you which tram to take to get back to Preston. Wow. And that was when I realized that in Australia, I didn't need to be afraid. Like, granted, take precautions, but I didn't need to be afraid of every man. But in America, I still am. Yeah, because um, it's kind of what we're programmed to. Because you, mm, there's just oh, too much that happens. Too much that goes on that you just... When a stranger approaches you, you automatically just, it's like, you best back the hell up. You know, and that would just, yeah, that would just floor me because you're, you're used to, if somebody approaches you, you know, they want something. So, I don't live abroad anymore, but for half of 2018, I lived in Germany and I have so many stories. The town that I lived in had like a main plaza area and there was a cafe in that plaza. So a couple of my other American friends and I decided to try it out one day and there was a construction site nearby. We heard a really loud bang and you know, we kind of assumed that someone had fired a gun. And so we like ducked for cover and then we were looking around frantically trying to find like a place that we could run to or hide to get out of the situation. And then we realized that no one had shot a gun. No, it was a loud bang from the construction site. That's it. That's all it was. We'd been speaking in English, and we all have really obvious American accents, so all the Germans around us gave us these really sad looks, like, oh, these poor, poor Americans. <sighs> well, yeah. I mean, when you have to worry about, you know, if you go to the mall, or you go to a movie theater, or you go to a club... You know, or you go to a school. Sometimes bangs make us nervous. It's conditioning, I guess. Okay, so I moved to Sweden. And when I got here, I wasn't feeling too well, so I went to the doctor. And the doctor recommended that I get an EKG, an electrocardiogram. Now, instead of worrying about my health, my first reaction was, um, I'm sorry, I don't know if I can get one of those. Because I don't know if I'm going to be able to afford it. Right. And... This sweet little man, this sweet, amazing doctor, goes, um, did you not, did you not pay the, like, $20 when you got here? Um, I ended up getting a, EK, like, a regular EKG, a 24-hour long EKG, a blood test, and a freaking checkup for $20! Best part of this entire situation is, is that I am getting better, and I am getting the medical attention I need without going broke! Ah! This one... Yeah, um, it, it, it's literally cheaper for us to fly overseas and see a doctor. It's, oh, so messed up. I pride myself on being an American. I didn't make it out before COVID, but I went to Norway and I fell in love with Norway, I read about it, researched it, and I was like, I've got to visit first. And I only went for a week, and it was for the Infernal Metal Festival. And for the first time in my life, I was actually called an American. They didn't assume where I was from. And there was this beautiful Norwegian elder, and she says, Go Paska. And I said, Betlager, Jaisnaki, Litnosk. And I said, basically, she said, Happy Easter. And I said, I'm sorry, I don't speak a lot of Norwegian. And she goes, oh, you're an American. And she didn't worry about her purse. She didn't look at me sideways. And I cried. I cried when I left because for the first time, I was able to be just an American. I didn't even hardly drink, didn't do anything crazy. I bet that was. Because... 
America does have a lot of problems with race. And, uh, you know, it hasn't gotten no better in the last few years. In fact, it's gotten considerably worse. My friend from Kenya, I was giving him a ride home one time. And, uh, you know, I don't think anything of it. Um, my dad called me. And uh, he asked me if I was driving around with some guy in the car. And I, you know, I didn't think anything. I was like, no, I'm not driving around with some fella. And uh, he said, you know, well, weren't you going down, you know, whatever road it was the other day? And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I was dropping my friend off at his apartment. And my dad goes is he black and I said well he's from Kenya and he goes was he black and I said not until he got here he wasn't and uh it's just you know my dad wasn't overly racist but he had a a a bit of it and it's when I realized that as a kid, I mean, it, it was heartbreaking, but we don't have to live with the same beliefs our parents had, so we can move on from that. So during the first lockdown, um, we have an elderly neighbor, and we would go and check in on her every once in a while and, like, get her groceries if she needed, and progressively, she started not be able to breathe very well, and we knew it wasn't COVID because she had it before. But, like, at one point, it was, like, she couldn't even get to the door without, like, literally not being able to breathe and having to sit down. So, my partner decided that we needed to call an ambulance for her and get her to the hospital pronto. And when he told me that he was going to call an ambulance, the first thing that I said was, are you sure? Can she afford an ambulance? Like, we, we could just drive her. And it wasn't until my partner looked at me, like... And that it clicked that, oh, that's not a worry here. And then I went upstairs and cried because it really smacked me in the face that as Americans, we are conditioned to not worry about someone's health first, but to worry about whether or not they can financially afford to see a doctor and get help. Yeah, America, I'm noticing a lot of these have to do with the medical uh, deal. And, uh. Yeah, it, it, it's just the, the cost. To, I couldn't even afford the ambulance ride. You know, if if I had to take an ambulance, you know, I, I'd, I'd be broke before we got there. So I moved to Germany in 2018 as a study abroad student. And I had a nice apartment that was on the ground floor with a nice patio, a big door that opened that led to the patio. And I was minding my own business in bed one day. The door was wide open. I had my noise canceling headphones on and I heard these really loud banging noises coming from outside that weren't very far. And I'm like, that's not a firework or a firecracker. It can't be. I freak out because as an American, I'm like, I'm about to get shot. Somebody is shooting up all of the student apartments right now. So I call all of my friends and I'm like, did you hear that? Am I crazy? Do we need to call the police and whatever? And they're like, I don't know, but yeah, maybe call your boyfriend who's German and like ask him. So I call my boyfriend and I'm like, watching, we just heard this stuff, like what's going on? And he's like, not to worry, here in Germany, we don't have shooters. Those are probably just firecrackers. And I'm just like, I'm damaged. Like we are all damaged and freaking out about freaking firecrackers. We think we're gonna get shot up. Hey, I live in Ireland and I've lived most of my adult life here. I moved to Ireland in 1995. My teenage daughter was born here many years ago. And when she was born, I spent two nights in hospital before she was born. I had an emergency cesarean section and then I spent a further six nights afterwards. The total cost to me was zero. I kept asking them like, are you sure no one wants my credit card? Like, do you want my details so you can send me the bill? And they would just like laugh like, oh, you're American, there's no bill. So eight nights in hospital, emergency procedure zero bill okay i have another one um when i was studying in spain we had our orientation the first week of classes um, and our program director sat us all down and had to explain our health insurance to us and how it worked and basically it worked that you paid like a thousand euro for the semester and you got health insurance like free health insurance for everything covered everything um And she had to sit us down and she had this big group of Americans in a room and she was like, listen, if you are sick, 
go to the doctor. <laughs> and we were all like, yes. And she was like, no, like Americans don't go to the doctor. You won't go to the doctor when you're sick. So I have to tell you every year to do this and still kids will just put off going to the doctor because you're used to just like pushing through illness. No matter what it is, I don't care if it's a cold, yep. go to the doctor. And she had to actually like spell that out for us. Yeah, our health care system is, it's not a system and frankly, it's an embarrassment. We should be embarrassed by it. We should be embarrassed by the way that we treat our people. You know, but we're not. We're still going to stand up and scream, Merka. Mark are so great. Yeah, it's great if you can afford it. You know, if you're poor, you're just shit out of luck. You know, maybe the hospital will take you on as a charity case because they do that for me sometimes. But if they don't take me on as charity, and even if they do take me on as charity, when they use outside things like radiologists and stuff, they don't take you as charity. You still got those bills to pay. You know, it's just, ugh, it's horrible. You know, if my appendix ever starts twitching, I'm going to be like, yo, book that flight. Book that flight. Because I, I got to get somewhere else. You know, it's ridiculous and sad. And, you know, and yet we still, we tout, you know, how great, wonderful, we're so free. And yet we have, I'd like to see a comparison of how many freaking laws we have compared to other places because we're breaking laws left and right all day every day because we don't know them all you know it's it's illegal to um was it to walk away from like a cop or some some crap like that that's why when we see a foreign cop yeah we're gonna act weird because you don't want the cops to try and stop you because you you can just say the wrong thing and get like disorderly conduct and you know and, uh, there are some police that are not like that. you know I've met some we've had issues here in the apartments you know and uh, but they're not all like that but they still make me nervous and it's just because of so many of them having such bad publicity but uh, yeah America, we are fucking shit up left and right. We're going to start with our own people. America.